It's a quick video that shows you how to read data from a sensor connected to an Arduino Uno and collect the data using an app written in C Sharp. In this tutorial, I'll be using a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. You can buy these sensors on Amazon, AliExpress or eBay. They're only a few dollars. Sometimes DHT11 sensors come with four pins, but mine only has three. The first stage is to connect the sensor to the Arduino. We'll then write some code for the Arduino, and then a little C Sharp application in Visual Studio. So here's my hardware setup. This one is the DHT11 sensor, and obviously this is the Arduino Uno. My DHT11 pins weren't actually labelled, so laying the module so that the blue box thing is pointing towards you, I connected pin 1 to pin 2 of the Arduino, the middle pin to the 3.3 volts, and the third pin to the ground. Now we'll switch to the Arduino IDE and write the code to send the data from the Arduino to our C Sharp app. The first thing we need to do is to install the DHT11 library. We can do that by going to Tools and then Manage Libraries. When the Library Manager appears, type DHT in here. We need to scroll down a bit and the one that we want is the DHT Sensor Library by Adafruit. And you can see I've installed it here. So if it's not installed, then click on the Install button. Once the library is installed, you can go to File and then Examples and scroll down to DHT Sensor Library and then DHT Tester. So open this example. This example is pretty much what we need to hook up our Arduino to the C Sharp app. So you'll see here that the DHT pin is defined here and we're connecting it to pin 2. If you're using a different pin then you will need to change this value here. The next thing to do is to set the right temperature sensor. I'm using a DHT11 so I will uncomment that line and comment this line out. After we've changed those two configuration options it's time to just connect up our Arduino and then we can upload the sketch. So we'll just use the example here. So now this is uploaded, we can go to the serial monitor. And now it is showing us the data. So it says the humidity is 61%, the temperature is 24.9 degrees, and it's also given the Fahrenheit. The good news is that our sensor is actually working, so now we can customise this code a bit and send the data to the c -sharp application. So here is my custom code and I will link it to the description below. So basically I use the setup as the same and the board rate of the serial port is 9600. This is really important because we'll be using this in the c -sharp application later. I've commented out the test line here. And for the loop I'm still using the initial parts that read the temperature in Fahrenheit and in Celsius. It's up to you whether you record Celsius, Fahrenheit, and you may also want the humidity. So I've left in a quick check that if the sensor can't read it, then it returns an error message. I've commented everything else out, and all I do is to serial print the T variable here. This is the temperature in degrees Celsius. I've also left the delay in there, so it will only send the data every two seconds. That should be enough for most applications, but you can actually change this if you want to. I'll just quickly upload this sketch. Now when we look at the serial monitor, you see that just the temperature is coming out. Now we'll build the c -sharp receiver for the temperature data. So in Visual Studio, I'll select a new Windows format using the .NET Framework. I'll give it a name and I'll use the .NET Framework 4.8, which seems to be the most recent I've got here. Then I'll click on the Create button. So this gives us a blank Windows form. The first thing we'll do is to go to the toolbox and select a text box. Where are you? There you are. And we'll go to the Properties and change Multiline to True. I'll make it a bit bigger as well. So our temperature data will be output to this text box, but obviously you can do whatever you want with it in your own application. Next we'll go to the forms code. The first thing we need is a new using statement. So we will do using system.io.ports. This will allow us to access the serial port. We'll now set up a serial port object and call it serial port with a lowercase s. 
The next thing to do is to set up a timer to collect the temperature data at specific intervals. So we'll go back to the designer here, click on toolbox and put the timer here. If you're writing a more advanced app, you might want to look into threads and threading. The other thing to be careful of is to not block the application itself while you're collecting the data. So our timer goes down here, it doesn't actually appear on the form as it doesn't have a user interface component. So back in the form, after the form is initialized, we'll put in two lines for the timer. The first one is the interval, so the timer will run every one second. Then we put timer.start, just remember to start your timer. Back in the user interface designer, we can double click on timer1. This will give us a timer1 underscore tick event, which will run every time the interval times out here. We still need to do some initialization of the serial port though, so we'll put that under here after the timer has started. So we do serial port equals new serial port, and there are two arguments. The first one is the COM port, and the second one is the board rate. So remember that the board rate must match the board rate that you specified in the Arduino IDE. Make sure you've selected the right COM port name as well. You can check that in the Arduino IDE and you see mine is COM12 here. Next we will check that the COM port can actually be accessed and opened. So we'll use a try catch loop for this. So we'll try serial port open. If it doesn't work, then we will write an error message down here in the console. Note that there's a bit of a bad code smell here. Really, I shouldn't really start the timer unless the COM port is opened. So you might want to change that code. Not to worry, let's put some code here for the timer to actually read the data when the timer times out. So I'll make this a bit bigger. There's a few lines of code that go in this event. So we have a Boolean have temperature, which is initially false. Uh, if we don't have the temperature, then we will read a line from the serial port from the Arduino. And if it's not null, then we assume that we've got the temperature. Note that I haven't put anything about error handling here. You should really send something from the Arduino to show that there is an error if something has gone wrong. So if we do have the temperature, then we'll write it into the text box. Obviously with your own application, you could log the data to a database or a text file or something else. Now let's test our application. So just click on start here. Okay, so our application is running and it's receiving the data from the Arduino. I'll just put my hand over it so I can warm it up a bit. I must have cold hands. Ah, it's getting a bit warmer now. Yep, so you can see that the temperature does actually change. Okay, yeah, getting really warm now. So that's pretty much all you need to connect C Sharp to an Arduino and receive data. I should just mention that the DHT11 sensor isn't particularly reliable, especially if you buy a cheap one from China via AliExpress, eBay or Amazon. The other thermometer I have says it's 24.8 degrees today, so I think that's a couple of degrees cooler than my actual DHT11 is reporting. So obviously don't rely on cheap temperature sensors if you're writing some mega important application. I see all my wires have fallen out now. I hope you found that video useful. I do also have a similar video that shows you how to send data to the Arduino. I've linked to that in the description below. The source code I've demonstrated in this video is also available in the description below. Thanks for watching.